Hello, Pas Fabrega. I'm really, really happy meeting you now on, uh, you. on Zoom. And we are, I mean, you're for the second time in our competition, which is great. We are very honored to present the German premiere of Aurora. That was the same with your debut feature, Agua de Mar, in, in 2010. And Aurora premiered in Rotterdam in January, I, I guess. And now we, we are uh, able to present the film to our audience this festival week. So welcome. Thank you. It's really nice to be here, kind of. Yeah, to be. <laughs> I mean, Aurora to me is a, it's a film about spaces, about a film about possibilities, about, about the idea of what could be that stuck with me all the time since I watched, watched the film. It's about the solidarity between people, between two women and, um, and, and also, and first and foremost, an idea of parentship or motherhood. Uh, mm -hmm. that not necessarily involves uh, biological relatives, or maybe yeah. better not. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, there are many more things, but maybe we can start with the, with the story. Can you explain a little bit where the idea comes from, where, what, from what kind of experiences you had made or you experienced the society around you? Uh, could you explore this a bit? Well, the, the idea for the film, it was, um, I, I spent a long time sort of wondering if I wanted to be a mother or not. And during that time, I was like, uh, not, not really finding sort of like the, um, the way to talk about how I felt really, you know, it's like people told me about how difficult it could, it seemed like everybody only talked about practical issues, you know, like, realizing if you wanted to or didn't want to was kind of like a, a given you know like we're not even going to talk about that it's like you want to have kids or you don't want to have kids and if you do when is the right time in practical terms what is like the best way to do it so so you can sort of like arrange your life in the way you would want to and it just seems such a such a primary basic part of life and one where I think women are sort of like denied the depth that we really have and the complexity that we have, no? It's like, it's kind of assumed that you want to, or maybe you don't, and you're free not to want to, and that's great. And that's about as much as you can ask for. And I read this book um, by Sheila Hetty called uh, Motherhood. And it was sort of about the 10 years she spent thinking about whether she wanted to be a mother or not. And, I realize it's like you almost never see or read anything about the kinds of things you think about when when you're going through this. And um, and there's this thing where like you almost have to be grateful that like you get the choice and that's it. But I, I sort of I wanted to to do something that was a bit like what it's like to be in that time where you don't know and you don't know why you want to, you don't know why you don't want to, you both want to and not want to at the same time. And how this can happen when you're, you know, 18, it can happen when you're 40. And um, I think this, this is like the most important part about taking the decision. It's not like whether it's the right time, it's not the practical issues. It's really what is going on inside you. And, um, I think that's often overlooked. So <clears throat> that was sort of like the, the starting off point. And then, um, well, casting is like really important for me. So I went through, you know, I met like a lot of different people to play these, these parts. And it was really great when I met Raquel and Rebecca because they both had sort of like their own personal ideas about, about motherhood. Um, Raquel is a mother and Rebecca isn't and um, and yeah and we we talked about that a lot and then I think something else came into the film like it like a different layer that I really hadn't um, thought about but it just came from them which was kind of like you know the people that they are and I think that is something they brought into the film that it that that for me is like one of the the things I like best about it that it's just 
sort of really nice to watch these, you know, how, how they are just amazing people. I think they are like very kind. They're very thoughtful. They're very caring. And they, they brought that into it. That wasn't really something that I had initially thought about. I wasn't sure if there was going to be something kind of dark, if there was going to be something kind of devious or not. And they brought into it that they're just sort of like very, yeah, you know, lovely people. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. And that is so much, and that is so much, uh, uh, especially Luisa's, the, the art teacher, her humbleness yeah. for me is kind of, uh, I mean, you start the film with her, you take very much time to establish her as an art teacher and her humbleness, her movements, her her grace and also maybe her colors, they they define the, the whole film. I was wondering how much, I mean, you, you, you told us already a little bit about it, but I was wondering how much her personality um, defined the whole look of the film. Yeah, in a well, way. totally. I mean, like, that's one of, that's something I, I love. I mean, I know a lot of fiction directors and a lot of fiction actors really enjoy sort of like building a character. But I, I sort of love just like finding a person and observing them and sort of seeing like the character that they've built in their life. You know, in this sense, it's kind of more like a documentary kind of search because I, I like what happened with that, with that character, the Luisa character, I sort of interviewed like a lot of different women. And then I started like, when I, when I thought I was going to do it with Rebecca, I just started like spending time with her and I would bring my camera along and I went along to all the things she does. And I hung She's out She's an with architect, isn't she? I was, I was, I found her on the internet. She's a teacher. She teaches these art classes. Yeah. yeah. That precisely. Okay. okay. So I mean, little by little, I, I started to feel like, well, you know, it's like we could, we, we thought about her being like a cello player at one point. We had this oh. idea. Okay. And we kind of thought like, oh, it would, it would be cool because, you know, she has to carry like this big instrument and it can sort of like symbolize, you know, this, this question she's carrying around with her. And we went to a lesson together and we tried to see if she could like learn basic things of playing cello and we could build that character. But the more that I spend time with her and the things she actually does, that she, she's a dancer and she teaches these art lessons and she spends lots of time with kids and she's amazing with kids. And she's an architect and she's so, and, and yeah, and it's like, it's what you say. It's like, even her, her facial expressions, everything in her is so much the person she is, no? And, and sometimes we, I don't know, like, like we think we have to find sort of, sort of like this darkness, this edge. And I thought it would be like refreshing just to make a film about someone that, that is, that, you know, there's complicated stuff, but there's really, really like, like a lot of, of, of love. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And in that way, I mean, I mean, she's very self-conscious. Mm -hmm. She's very, even in her long distance relationship, everything. I mean, she's really like a very adult person, very self-conscious. And in that way, she's so empowering with yeah. our, uh, though she's so humble and and not very uh, and yeah she's she's very humble and i and i what i really loved about the film is this this kind of empowerment that yeah. comes from that self assurance that yeah. she uh, and um and I was wondering how this first scene where she's established as an art teacher, where she explains her ideas uh, on painting to her pupils, how this scene, maybe you can explore, but how this scene, because it looks so documentary-ish to me, yeah. uh, how do you decide it? Because you, you took very much time to, um, for that establishment uh, sequence. Yeah, well, she, she, Rebecca, the, the actress who played the part, she, she decided to study philosophy 
you know, at a point in life where she was like pretty well established as an architect and everything. And she started studying philosophy. And now the, the classes that she teaches are actually part of the school of philosophy at the university. Oh. But they are these art lessons. And it's like, mm, so they're not teaching art technique. They are sort of like teaching art as a way of being. So it's it's more like a, so it's philosophy students teaching these kids the art lessons as a way of, so it's, I, for me, it was like, wow, this, this is incredible. I love this. Like this should be, this is the kind of things I, I want to know more about. And, um, and I went to a few of her classes and I just thought, you know, we, we all need to like sort of think about these things a little bit more. And that's why I wanted to have sort of like, you know, not just say, okay, she's a philosophy teacher, we've established that, but to actually hear and think about the things she's saying. Yeah. Mm, super, yeah. I mean, at the, at the center of, of the storyline, there's this unwanted pregnancy of, of Juliana. And uh, <clears throat> of course, she's in a difficult situation. Uh, but what I like is that you don't, this is kind of approach that you don't uh, uh, tell this as a big drama in the in the more than half of the uh, of the film, and um, it just becomes the drama when when Juliana's mother uh, discovers the pregnancy, and I love the the casualness how of this uh, revelation scene on the bus. So mm -hmm. and and then the, the drama is big and and, and everything had, has has to be put back in places. You know, it's, yeah. it's as if the patriarchy strikes back. You know, yeah. we have this feeling, and, and uh, you yeah. don't even have like any men involved. It's it's no. not you know it's like it's just there. Like this is the way it goes when when you're a teenager and you get pregnant. There's no yeah. other way possible and. I, I just, I just wonder, you know, about being a mother and about having kids. I kind of feel like this could change so much if women had more agency in deciding their, their way, our way to be mothers, you know, that there wasn't this, I mean, when you're a mother, you sort of feel like any decision that you make, I, I don't know, like there's the, there's this strange thing around like the responsibility of having kids and how it, it goes so heavy on a woman. It, there's almost like a punishment thing, you know, it's like you have to carry this, but it, it, it kind of makes it very, very complicated to establish the conditions that you would need to be happy as a mother. It's almost like it's a contradiction. It's like when you're asking to have kids, you're not asking to be happy. Like you're, you're, in other things, I mean, if you're making a film and it's like, it's too much work, you're allowed to get help. You're allowed to get a crew. You're allowed to get people to help you. But being a mother, it's like very, very tricky. I don't know. Mm. You have very, to do it yeah, on your own. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very, and, you know, and it's this whole thing that like nobody can replace you. And I, I, I don't know, you know, nobody can replace moms and dads. And I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because this this gap between uh, who's supposed to be a mother or a parent and who not, uh, even though, I mean, Juliana's mother was obviously supposed to be a mother, but we got the feeling that you don't have the capacity, I mean, the, the true capacity, the emotional uh, um, uh, tools to do that. And on the other hand, those people who either decide not to become a mother or they were not supposed to be mothers. And I, it's, it's an interesting, yeah, collage of, uh, of options that you, that you point out. Uh, and I have the feeling, I mean, there's this other, I mean, there are these two scenes where the young people are completely on their own and I have the feeling that this kind of disbalance that you were talking about when it comes to motherhood that leads to another disbalance because and this disconnection this complete disconnection between the teenagers and the parents as if they're parallel worlds mm -hmm. and uh, I got the idea that if they want 
disbalance would be solved, maybe the other one yeah, uh, yeah. Might, might be uh, yeah. solved as well. Because it's uh, these are interesting scenes where where the the young people the, in the kind of let's say, yeah maybe kind of well behaved orgy settings uh, yeah. there you show them where obviously Juliana's pregnancy might uh, come from. Um, they're they're pretty isolated within the framework of your film. Maybe you can explore a little bit of your ideas. What? I thought, I, I think that came from that I didn't want it to be so much an issue. I didn't want to have like a father directly involved because then it becomes a thing about the father and what's he doing and is he going to be responsible or not and da da da. And I, I didn't, I didn't want it to be about that. I sort of wanted to have like a woman with her decision by herself. No, and and that's why I thought of this, a situation where you wouldn't know who the father is, and and also because in Costa Rica I don't think it's really that. I mean, it's like your parents would definitely yell at you if if you get pregnant as a teenager. But I found it sort of hard to believe that someone would hide it for that long and that it would be such a big thing. But I think if you got pregnant and didn't know who the father was and you're like a very well-behaved kid, like that, that would be enough. Mm. But you're like in a really, really, really anxious situation. And, and it's also not, not what you would expect in this particular story. So I sort of, I really love that universe of, of Juliana's friends. I just, I started like thinking about this idea and, and, you know, and chasing it. And I just, it also, I don't know. It's like very luminous, no? It's like very hopeful because mm. they're kind of, they're sort of making up their own rules. And, and it felt to me like, like for me, like they symbolize sort of like the future, you know, of possibilities. Like, yeah. like when they're by themselves and they're thinking about how, how they would do things. This is for me, like the, the kind of the kind of environment where anyone would want to ask themselves the question of whether they want to be a mother you know mm. in a in a community in love in support and no judgment mm. and they symbolize for me mm. yeah and it's interesting and what i really do also like about your film that you <clears throat> that you obviously are not interested in explaining everything you're not very you're you're not over explanatory one could say especially when it comes to the motivations of your of your uh, main characters and yeah. i like this kind you, know, you call it luminous but this atmosphere that you just just you just leave it with them you know and yeah. we can follow that and maybe yeah. we, we, we still have some questions, but it's not necessary to, uh, to answer them all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the title of your film is Aurora. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the it's, uh, goddess of the dawn and of renewal uh, as far as I read. And, but I mean, Aurora is, is the name of the to be born girl, yeah. right? And yeah. I like this, that it's just the, just the the perspective yeah Let's... it was so hard. i mean that that name wasn't there from the beginning oh. that, actually aurora is raquel's daughter so that's her real name in real life all right okay <laughs> and, um, and it wasn't originally the title of the film that the film was for a long time it was called like uh, unrest so it was oh. sort of like how this question you know makes you like anxious and it's so difficult and everything and then the film turned out to be not so much about the anxiety but it was more about yeah sort of like love and solidarity and um and possibilities yeah and, they, I, and yeah. finally when I thought I mean there's that scene where they talk about the name like that's all improvised oh. 
I kind of, I mean, I just kind of said, like, talk about, you know, about she's about to have a baby. What do you guys have to say about that? And, um, and I think that in that, in that scene, like for, for a little moment for Raquel, it was like, she forgot about the film, you know, I, I don't know. Like I, I kind of felt when we were shooting it, like she was actually reliving her own pregnancy you know, surrounded by friends who were all sort of like really interested in it when it wasn't like that. In real life, she was by herself, very scared, very depressed, sort of being told by everyone that she'd messed up, that, you know, her life was over. And I think like that's that's one of my favorite things about the film that it, when when we were doing it, it was like she sort of like went through all that again but surrounded by people that were telling her it was okay. And everyone in the crew like was so amazed by her and by her baby. And um, this, this is, this is like the way it should be. I don't know. So, um, so, so that scene turned out to be like really important for me. And she said the name of her real daughter and, and, and I ended up realizing like the whole film is about this person that doesn't exist yet, but it's about the possibility of this person, no? And, and also the fact that the name is a, something that is starting. And so it, it just seemed right. Mm -hmm. And to renew every day. Yeah, I like this when And I like this, uh, this idea of changing uh, our ways of uh, thinking of parentship and motherhood. And this is so so motivating and so full of hope when 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 you've seen your film so thank you very much for this beautiful work and thank i really you. do look forward to your next one i can't wait hopefully so we together next time <laughs> yeah till we meet again bye thank you